Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and today we are going to talk about the Lost Mines of Fendelver. This is the starting adventure for Dungeons and Dragons. It comes in the starter set. And my question is, what makes this adventure the starting adventure? And why should you, as a new DM, run this adventure? And why should you, as a veteran DM, maybe consider going back to it? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Here we go. Alright, humanoids, if you are brand new to this hobby, then you are likely considering or have already picked up a starter set by Wizards of the Coast. You can get this in pretty much any store and in the description down below if you still need one. But inside this set, you will find the starting adventure, the Lost Mines of Fendelver, along with some other useful things. If you want to see everything that comes in that starter set, I have a video dedicated to the starter set and to the essentials kit. You're welcome to check that out. But but the real question is, this adventure, is it worth running? And the short answer is yes. You should definitely run this adventure if you are a brand new DM, and we're going to break down the reasons why. Now, this adventure was released as part of the starter set in July of 2014, which I thought, hey, that wasn't very long ago. That was just like a few years ago. And then I remembered that it is seven years ago at this point. Oof. But to this day, it is still released in their starter sets. They haven't changed it, and there's good reason why. The purpose of this adventure is to introduce both DMs and players to the world of D&D in a way that is simple and fun, so that you have the confidence to continue on with this hobby after this adventure is done. This adventure fulfills that purpose in three ways. Number one, it is simple. Number two, it is a railroad, which if you don't know what that term is, we'll get to it. And number three, it's a good story. So let's break down the Lost Mines. The first, it is simple. I mean incredibly simple. If you are a veteran DM looking at this, you'll go, that's it's not even fun. It doesn't even have all the things. It is incredibly simple for a reason. It's supposed to introduce people to this world. As a veteran, you've probably forgotten how incredibly intimidating it is to just be dropped into an open world and have no idea what you're supposed to do, either as a player or a DM. This keeps it very simple. It is four steps. The first one is Goblin Arrows, where you're introducing the idea of combat, both as a DM running it and as a player getting used to your character. You're going to go through an entire cavern system full of goblins and get some useful information. The second part is Phandalin. This is where you make it to the settlement of Phandalin and you start uncovering some of the secrets of the very small town. Again, this is simple. It's not a mega city where your players are going to get lost. It's a very small town with a very set number of NPCs and things that they can investigate. Number three is really the most complicated out of all of these, and it's still not that bad, and it's called The Spider's Web, where you have a whole bunch of optional side quests that aren't really side quests because they all connect together and lead to the same point and the same direction, all of them pointing you towards Cragmar Castle. And then finally, you have Wave Echo Cave. After the players discover the location of the lost Wave Echo Cave, they go through and do a classic dungeon crawl, which is what you would expect from starting an adventure like this. You clear the cave, you restore it to the town of Phandalin, you're the heroes, and you go off on another adventure. Which leads me to my second point. It's a railroad. Railroading is a term in the D&D community that simply means there's only one direction to go. Your players don't have a lot of choice. It's like they're on a train going to a destination. And this adventure in particular is like the train from Spirited Away. There's nothing else that your players can do. You are on this railroad. You are going to this destination whether you like it or not. And in this case, it's not a bad thing. 
Remember, this is to help you understand the overall idea of D&D. After the starting adventure is over, it opens up the whole world of Faerun to you, including a lot of other adventures that are primed and ready to be played after this starting adventure. So if you are someone who's intrigued by the idea that your players can do whatever they want in your world, and so you maybe don't want to play this because it is such a railroad, don't be concerned about that. This is a starting adventure. It's not a full campaign. It only takes you to level five. And honestly, it shouldn't take more than four or five sessions to run. After that point, everyone will have gotten the hang of both their characters and how things are done, and you can move on to something that's far more open world and complicated, like Curse of Strahd. Ooh, maybe save that one for like your third campaign or so. That. That's a big boy. Whew. Yes, Lost Minds of Fendelver is a railroad, but for a good reason. It's giving you clear direction so you know where to go so nobody is all that stressed. And the good part about this is my third point. It's a good story. Even though it is a railroad, even though it is only one direction to go, there's still a little bit of mystery, a little bit of intrigue, a little bit of investigation, a little bit of side questing, just enough to get your feet wet, if you will, so that you can practice these things for the larger adventures that are to come. So is there anything that I don't like about the Lost Minds of Fandelver? Yes. Yes, there is. The first is just a pet peeve thing. This dragon is on everything, right? This green dragon. And so you'll be like, ooh, yeah, my players are gonna fight a dragon. Not really. This dragon is a part of a side quest that is entirely possible that your players will never actually do. And it's possible that they'll never encounter this dragon. And after seeing it on all of the art, your players may be like, hey, I thought there was a dragon in this Dungeons and Dragons game. Yeah, well, you might have to do the dragon later. <laughs> all these piles of gold and stuff. Yeah, it's not there either. He's just in an abandoned tower. Like, I get Dungeons and Dragons should have a dragon on it. Then do a quest. It's all about the dragon, not the darn side quest. But that's a pet peeve. It has nothing to do about the actual adventure. <laughs> the next thing that I'm not entirely enthused at with this starting adventure is the hook if you don't use the pre-generated characters. The starter set comes with five pre-generated characters that as part of their backstory links together this entire adventure. However, if you would like your players to create their own characters and do whatever it is that they want to do, then it's a very weak hook. Uh, why your players should care about these things is not really there. So I would suggest if you're letting players create their own characters, you still need to include some of those uh, background hooks that are in the pre-generated ones if you want your players to actually care about the minds of Fandelver. Um, otherwise, they could just be like, yeah, I don't care. I'm gonna go off and do this. And you will have no idea what to do there because again, Railroad. So overview, Lost Minds of Fandelver is simple to run and simple to play in, and yet it gives you enough variety to keep you guessing. There's a large variety of monsters in here, though most of them center around undead. There's a good plot line and some intrigue that your players are sure to love and you're going to love sprinkling in some clues for. There are a few side quests to get your players looking for those things and investigating different leads. It's easy prep as you just have to read the chapter that your players are going to be in. You really don't have to read any more than that. And as a matter of fact, I read through this entire adventure in just a matter of a couple of hours. Also has a super easy leveling guide that tells you exactly when to give your players experience and gives you all of the loot that your players would find in all of the different locations. All of this makes for an extremely easy starting adventure to run. Now, I would suggest picking out your next adventure because like I said, this one is not going to take that long and you can think of it like a tutorial in a video game. It's just enough to get you started. So pick your next adventure and be excited for that open world that your players are going to be a part of. And I sincerely hope that you enjoy this really fun starting adventure. And I hope that this gives your game advantage. Until next time, my friends, Halfling Hannah here, signing out. 
If you like today's content, then you need to thank these people. These are my incredible patrons who have supported me every step of the way. You guys are amazing, and I am so grateful to you. If you want to support Halfling Hobbies, then consider going on over to Patreon, where you can get some awesome DM resources. Bye!